Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Alexander Howell, and today you might have looked at the title or you might have looked at the thumbnail and thought, if I'm going to move out of the U.S. and I'm going to be safer, I'm thinking Canada or I'm thinking Sweden or I'm thinking Switzerland, one of those kind of nations, right? Like we're going to move somewhere and we're going to be safer than the United States there. But the place that I'm going to talk about outside of Canada is much closer than you might think. So again, my name is Alexander Howell. Welcome to my channel where we talk about real estate and travel all over the place. But today we're gonna focus on a similar thing that we've had for quite some time. And if you'd like to, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the video, please feel free to hit the little notification bell. That's gonna let you know anytime I go live, whether it's streaming or one of these videos pops up on YouTube. You can also feel free to visit me on any of these social networking sites and text me at 816-727-7740. That sends it directly to me so I will get it immediately. Sometimes it gets me uh, a little bit, uh, I get a little bit behind and I need to uh, get better about that. But also at Alexander from KC is how you can normally follow me on social media. Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter are my number ones, but of course, Instagram is my number one. So how can you be safer by leaving the US? Let's talk about it. Now, the first thing that I wanna say is don't be mad. I love being from the United States of America. I am a flag-waving, red-blooded person from the center of America. You could not make me more proud to be where I am from ever. But there are some things we need to talk about, and that is that you can be safer if you go somewhere else, according to CEO World Magazine, which is where I got all of this information from, along with other sources along the way, like CNBC, The Times, and that kind of thing. And we're gonna go over that too. But if you look at the safest cities, we're gonna talk about the second safest city in North America. And by the way, Quebec City, you're number one. So if anybody's from Quebec City and they're worried about being safer, don't worry about it. Find the next video. I appreciate you, I love you. Thank you for subscribing, but no need. <laughs> but the second safest city, the safest city in Latin America and the safest city in Mexico is called Merida. And for those of you who are subscribers to this channel, which is about 25% of my viewers, you guys have already heard back and forth about Merida. But for those of you who are new to this channel, 75% of my viewers, let's talk about Merida and why it is not only the safest city in Mexico, the safest city in Latin America, the, the safest, the, the, sec, the, ah, ah, the safest city in Latin America, but it is also the second safest city in North America. Take a drink every time I say safest city on that one too. Now you might be wondering, well, I thought Mexico was dangerous. What about the crime? What about the cartels? What about the border? Heard a lot about the border lately. And no matter what side you fall on, you hear about these things. And Mexico was sometimes displayed as this cartel-ridden drug trafficking place. And are there those things? And yes, that is 100% true. And there are many issues with regard to that, that the Mexican government and several other governments are trying to handle, including the United States of America's government. You can disagree with policy all day long. I'm not going to. What I'm gonna say is there are certain areas of Mexico where there are significant issues. And then, there is Yucatan and Merida especially. That's why it's the second safest city. So when you look at Mexico overall, a quarter of the homicides that occur in Mexico occur in just five cities, five. And those cities are Tijuana, Ciudad Juarez, Cancun, Acapulco, and Culiacan. Those five cities on their own make up a quarter of all homicides throughout Mexico, a quarter of them. Now let's, talk about Medida for a second when we and I'm going to use homicides because that seems to be the thing that we all we all hit on. I mean, I'm from Kansas City and I think we had 16, I don't know, last week or two. 16 was the total that Medida had in the entirety of the first half of 2019, which was the latest data that I could gather. So 16 total, they're all bad. Like, let's let, I don't want to lessen what a homicide is. But 16 and the first half of a year from not too long ago, that's far better than most places. So Yucatan is the safest state in terms of homicides in all of Mexico. And the reason that I say Yucatan is because I'm not just looking at the city of Merida in that particular scenario, because that was the data, the way that the data was structured that I found. But Merida is the capital of the state of Yucatan. So that's the way that I kind of looked at the data. And with that in mind, let's keep moving on. So with all of those points and others, Merida is considered the second safest city in North America. And again, when you think about the fact that it is 21st overall in the world compared to the first United States city of Salt Lake City being 53rd overall 
in the world. You can kind of tell that this particular state, this particular city is really well policed and crime is not as big of a deal there as it is in most places. In fact, if you follow some of the Facebook groups that I follow, follow the newspapers, online magazines, you're going to notice a theme and that is that crimes that you would probably think were fairly minor in your hometown are a major deal there just because they don't happen as often. And Merida and the beach cities that are north of it, like Progresso, which is the most populous, all kind of take that mentality and really drive it home. What do I mean by this? You'll notice an increased police presence. This isn't a negative thing. This is you have the state police, the federal police, the municipalities police, wherever that might be. You're going to see a lot of police everywhere and there will be times where there are gonna be checkpoints. I'm just gonna be honest with you, don't drink and drive ever, but especially in the state of Yucatan. They take it very seriously. You're going to immediately go into jail and you're going to get out, but it's going to be a terrifying experience as it would be here. But in the month that we stayed there from late February of 2020 until late March of 2020, there were more checkpoints in Merida and Progreso that I noticed than I have in the entirety of the year of 2020 and 2021 even to this point in Kansas City, Missouri. Bigger city, we have all of the don't drink, don't drive stuff. There were more there in a month and by a significant margin. So just letting you know, crime is punished there, uh, but it's also policed well. Like I went up to several cops, asked a question, they gave me the answer. There was no negative interaction whatsoever. Very positive tourism spot, but it is, it is policed very well. You're gonna notice it. Don't be scared, don't be freaked out. That is part of the reason that crime is so much, so much less of an issue there is because they have a good police presence and it's positive for all sides. At least from what I saw, they, they all seem very nice. Some people might have negative experiences. <laughs> That's something. Okay, so Merida is without question the safest city in Mexico. It's a wonderful destination. Look it up. Try to prove me wrong in the comments. Tell me all the negative stuff that you possibly can. Comment down below and say Merida isn't safe. And then if somebody sees that comment, you reply to them and tell them how safe it is. Just saying, probably a good idea. But comment down below if you don't think I'm right. I'm open to it. So I've talked about how Merida is safe this entire time. And again, if you're playing that drinking thing that I told you to a while ago, you're going to be wasted. So you won't be paying attention to this, but when you watch this the next day and decide not to, let's talk about something else. Because all of this being said, I want to make sure that these things are handled as well. Because no matter where you travel, even in your hometown, you should do a, several things to make sure that you always stay safe. And the first one of those, number one, is have people with you. If you're going to a new destination, if you're going to a new place, I am always going to recommend that you don't just go by yourself. Some people are brave and some people are far braver than I am. If they go to a destination the first time, they're gonna go by themselves, they're gonna go walk around, that's fine. And some people are good with that. I personally would recommend if you're going to a place the first time, make sure that you have people with you. That way, if somebody approaches you, if a group approaches you, you have more people around you watching your back and, they, and you are watching their back. It's just, it seems to be safe, safer, safest. The other thing that I try to tell people, and I have had this rule since college, and the reason that I say college and not high school is because I was a nerd in high school and I didn't go out. And when I did, it was like to somebody's house to drink Kool-Aid and watch musicals and stuff. I was a theater nerd, deal with it. <laughs> but nothing positive happens after midnight anywhere. Just ask the people who wrote the movie Gremlins. That didn't work, they all turned bad except the one, he was good. But nothing positive happens after midnight, whether it's the streets are dark, you can't see everything, you're by yourself, whatever it might be, or especially when you involve alcohol or substances that are gonna change your mind a little bit, that most of the time is going to occur after midnight, people walking home, you're going to be in a mood where maybe you don't wanna be messed with, they don't wanna be messed with, but you both think that you're messing with each other. Just avoid after midnight if you can, have a fun time, but avoid going too crazy. <laughs> So number three, the rumors are true. Don't drink the tap water. I've been to some very nice hotels down there, stayed in a very nice Airbnb. It's an amazing place. But even the people that I speak to within the hotel, within the Airbnb, every single one of them says, don't drink the tap water. Now there are some places, because I'm answering this for the haters that are gonna say, it's fine. Hold on. There are some places that bring drinkable water in, they put it in their cistern, and then they drink it from, a, they drink it from their own system. And that's completely fine. 
But unless they tell you that, I'm just going to fully recommend grab a bunch of gallons of water from the store, bring them home, use that for everything except showering and stuff like that. Now, this is a rule, again, just like all of these, or most of these, no matter where you go, don't flash how much money you have. I have several friends that will go down and, you know, to, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's Mexico, it's pretty much anywhere. It could be down the street to a bar here. They'll whip out their wallet and they've got a bunch of cash and they like showing it off. Don't, don't do that. All you're doing is inviting trouble. That's just a rule for anywhere you go. Safe city, not safe city, whatever it might be. Don't do that. Now, number five is be your own bodyguard. And what I mean by that is invest in some self-defense classes or some martial arts classes or, you know, even weightlifting, running, whatever it might be. Make sure that you can defend yourself in some way, shape or form. And sometimes that means that you're just willing to, uh, you know, kick them in the cookies. Run. That's self-defense. Get out of there. But just know that no matter where you go in the world, be safe doesn't just mean that the city is safe. It means you know how to defend yourself or stay out of situations where you shouldn't be. Keep passports, electronics, and other personal items like that in lock boxes, or make sure that you keep them in your vision, in your sight, or in your hand if you go out anywhere. There are tons of stories of people just leaving computers in hotel rooms and they're gone when they get back, or taking their passport out and putting it on a table and it's gone. Keep your stuff with you that is the most important to you especially. And number seven, and this is something that uh, I hate even having to say, but no matter where you go, including Merida, including Kansas City, wherever it might be, watch your drinks. Whenever you go out to a bar, a restaurant, whatever it may be, make sure that your drink is attended in some way. I've gone as far as going up to a bartender if I'm by myself and it's a packed restaurant and saying, hey, I'm gonna go use the restroom, can you take my drink? And sometimes they'll look at you funny, no doubt about it. I normally, I'll just say like, I tip very well. Can you please just put on the back bar and I'll grab one when I come back. So they'll put a menu right there, whatever it might be, and it's fine. This, unfortunately, or I don't know what the right way to say this is. Fortunately, unfortunately, it's all bad, but this normally is going to be something that is a problem for women more than it is men. That's not me trying to be sexist in any way, but the statistics will show that out. I think Vice did a really good piece on that. Um, a, a couple of years ago. But ladies, gentlemen, watch your drinks when you're out. Way too many people spike them, roofie them, just drug them in general. So be safe out there. And again, these are rules not for Medida because this is an excessive problem there. I've just kind of gone on a rant of be safe, make, make good decisions. So anyway, that's the video. In the first half, I hit on Merida and why it's so safe. In the second half, it was more about keeping safe. But I hope you understand that Merida being the second safest city in North America is incredibly amazing. It is an old colonial town. The center square was built on, uh, on top of Mayan ruins. There's an amazing church that's been there for hundreds of years. The square itself has been there for the exact same amount of time. Just some of the buildings have kind of gone in and out. But all of the construction around there, it's, it's just a very beautiful city. And if you're looking for more modern, you go a little bit north of the city and it's there. And you want to see the beach, you go 25 minutes north of the city and it's there. There are tons of things to see in Merida, not enough to fit on a week long trip, but it is something that for retirement, for a new, for a new adventure, I would absolutely recommend going to Merida, Mexico. And again, second safest city. I'm holding up two, I should just hold up the two. That's okay. It doesn't matter. We're fine. So that's the video. Thank you again so much for watching. My name is Alexander Howell. Please feel free to visit me on any of these social media sites. 816-727-7740 is the line that you can text me directly on or follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Twitch at Alexander from KC. I go live on Twitch from time to time, but it's gaming and you, some of you might find it a little boring. <laughs> And feel free to visit my website, alexanderhowell.com. If you hit the contact us page, all that does is send me a direct email. If you have any questions about Medida and about moving there, uh, if I don't know the answer, I'm always happy to connect to you. So there we go. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching this video. And again, as always, peace.